Hello YouTube land, it's Brent Son coming to you from Lexington, Kentucky, the Bluegrass State. Today we have Dogman Stories from Louisiana. This is going to be super creepy kind of stuff, man, because this, the, the guy, Mike Edwards, uh, who we're going to speak with here in just a second, ha has some very interesting uh type information and he's going to share with us some possible future stories that are going to come of it um so i really hope that you enjoy this program today um he has had an interesting dogman encounter he takes his dog hunter bone with him in case you when, when he's talking about hunter bone i want you to know that that's his dog it's a german shepherd dog that he takes with him out in the woods and uh yeah, I, I know you're going to like this. Um, if anyone out there has any uh, story of Bigfoot and Dogman, any kind of cryptid, supernatural, paranormal type story that you want to share, you can contact me at brentson at gmail.com and share your story. So let's go to our guest, Mike Edwards from Louisiana. Enjoy. Mike, if you would, I'd like for you to introduce yourself and tell where you live, and then we'll get into your story. Okay, sir. Where I live, I live in South Louisiana in a town called Crowley, C-R-O-W, like Crow, L-E-Y, Louisiana. Crowley, Louisiana is about, it's on Interstate 10 between Lake Charles and Lafayette, about 13,000 people. It's called the, the Rice Capital of America's is all producing rice, small, small community, railroad tracks runs right between it. I live on the south side of Crowley. All right. And um, your, your name is Mike Edwards, like we said. And uh, um, do you do you want to say what you do or anything like that? or? Well, at the time of the encounter, I was a, a welder at a shipyard's. Levac Shipyards is on the Mermintal, about a good eight clicks from here, going to, going uh, west toward Texas on Mermintal River. It's a shipyard. Okay. Wow. So we, weekends, from that, you know, I mean, you're on a schedule. You work hard, and you get your weekends off. Right. And you want to go hunting with your dog and get away from it. You do, you go and do it. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, people in Louisiana, they... Uh, they they tend to be um, more um, kind of at one with the land and getting out and doing things uh, in the environment and uh, and take advantage of the the resources. Don't you agree? Big time, rice farmers. This is the rice capital, so everything's rice fields around here, bayous, coolies, farmers. More than you can count. It's all the religion of the Cajuns is the land. They're right. French heritage. And Indian heritage too. Right. Yeah. It, it's it's a very interesting place. Uh, I tell you that. Um, uh, all kinds of uh, fascinating stories come from Louisiana, and some of the best stories I've ever gotten um, come from Louisiana. Uh, there there seems to be uh, maybe I, I don't know. I guess when it comes to the cryptid type stuff, there seems to be. Uh, perfect habitat for cryptids to uh, be able to navigate and hide and, and, uh, and I guess travel through the levees and things like that, but still yet hide. Um, so, so I, I think it's a, it's a, uh, it's a very good place. If you were trying to hide from humans, uh, the, it certainly would be a good area to do that. More than good. So the, the bayous of Louisiana, when I first moved here, I had to, to move from Dallas Fort Worth, Boomtown, to here. I'm a country boy. I know how to shoot rabbits. When I moved here, I did every study of Majimal, got lost in the bayous. But then I started figuring out these stories the Cajuns were telling about the dog men and the loop guru, you know, stories and right. the big. Well, puh. you're gonna if you're looking for that, you're gonna find it in Louisiana. There's just no way around it, and the bayou is perfect. For living in, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. Oh, I, I agree. I, I had one lady come on. Uh, her name is Diana, 
and uh, you know she never did share her uh, last name because she was uh, kind of worried about the ridicule. But um, but she was taking pictures, and uh, I, she had some pretty darn good pictures. And one of the uh, videos that she sent me had her child crying, saying, you know, and she was saying the, the little kid was saying, uh, "It's staring, it's looking at me, mommy," and she was looking around for it, and. It was just so scary, man. It was like, my goodness, I don't know if I want to go there. <laughs> you know? And, you know, most of these people, there's people that have had encounters that I've tried to tell people, and they say, oh, I don't, but they want to shrug it off because they don't believe what they're hearing. But, see, I went the extra mile, and with my dog, Hunter Bone, we spent lots of time in the bayou. And when he didn't like a situation, I know something was wrong. A pair of eyeballs are staring a few times. Something creeping, hunting along with us. I didn't like, he didn't like that. None. Footprints. I said, Hunter, what in blazes is that? It's a footprint with multiple toes and stuff. You know, call Mark. I said, you know what, Hunter? <laughs> yeah. I think you better watch where we're, what we're creeping into in this bayou now. Yeah. He wasn't afraid, but he was, he gave me the look like he didn't want to encounter something like that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, had, I, I can tell you this. Uh, it went, if you're, um, a person who has lived in Texas and yes. Louisiana, um, oh, that right there is the toughest American there is in the country because the Cajuns and the Texans, to me, are men, men. You can believe I'll tell you that. what, I met Cajuns and, and they're, they're all French. See, I was born in England. I wasn't born in America, but I have American blood. These Cajuns. They got pirate blood in them. Some of these people are just, they live in the bayou with the alligators and the snakes, and they know about the loop guru. And mm -hmm. all these stories, see, I had to go to the public library and research Louisiana. When I started monkeying in the book section of stories from the Cajuns, I said, well, I, you know, it was debatable at first, but I said, no, I'm going to go find out. And sure enough, sure as the, the, the sky and the skeeters come out at night, my brother. And a snake, you're going to run into something. Yeah, right. It's just many names, so, so yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It's it's a it's a, a very interesting place. I know of some places right now that I could go, and um, and uh, I plan to go. That I know I'm going to go, and I'm going to be able to get footage. It's just a matter of time till I. Uh, pull the funds together this year and I'm going to come down um, and I'm buying some gear and things like that right now as I'm speaking, you know, And but it, but it yeah. takes money to do those kind of things. And sure. uh, But I know of an island down there because... Uh, um, the Marsh Island? Yeah, yeah. And and I know, I know they're there for sure. Sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. I run into all these old fishermen. Some of these dudes, I used to work in an old folks home and they'd tell me these are veterans of the United States military that are old and dying would tell me about loot gurus and uh you know all these funky critters that were in the bayous that they right. knew about since they were boys so mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's interesting you know something unless you get out and do that you're not gonna know you no know, i've been losing that for 22 years in this little town and took my excursion well, i want to do my excursions in the bayou and you're going to have to go see for yourself cameras. It's definitely yeah. a cell phone. I, I <laughs> dropped a cell phone in the bayou one time. That's not good. <laughs> right. I'll, <laughs> I'll wait for a phone call. <laughs> so, uh, no, well, well, whenever I come down there, I'll, I'll definitely uh, uh, give you a, a call, and, and maybe you can sure. come meet up with us. And, uh, sure. Uh, I know something. I, I, there's a To give you a lead... I have, see, I was a dog man, dog catcher in this town, okay, for the town. And right down the railroad tracks, there's a house over here. It's called Ghosts on the Bayou. Now a veterinarian now lives in that house, a Dr. Artall. Um, and his house, that, that place is a, a little plantation right down the railroad tracks where werewolves, documented now by the wildlife people, came on their property. You might want to talk to him. They excremented on his porch. They scared the crud out of the children. Werewolves standing up tall, jumping over the fence, and that's recorded. They could not identify the tracks 
or the excrement, and the people that lead us called the old uh, the old Ziegler nursery, plant nursery, and now a veterinarian lives in it. And I told him, I said, you know, your house was, has had werewolf activity since forever <laughs> in this thing. You know, the Ziegler's, I called her. She said, yeah, we got a cross on the wall and a gun in every room, she said, so call me before you come out now. <laughs> so so her children were affected by the Ziegler's. When, when Mr. Ziegler died, I call her. She says, yeah, I know the werewolf thing. She says, I think there's something on this property they want. And so that's what I was trying to figure out, why they'd visit that house. Hmm. And that's an old story. That's about 20 years old. But I told the good veterinarian doctor, said, you got, he said, I can handle it. He said, you write me a story or send me somebody. So you probably hook up with him and ask him something. That property is, is an old Indian burial ground. I know that much. Wow, I would I would definitely like to do that. Um, sure, we'll I can give you a few more of these. I can get you a whole page full of it. I'll, I'll be more than delighted to help you, sir, with your investigation. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. So we'll, we'll have to talk more about that later. And uh, yeah, for sure. You have my cell phone number, so save that. I called you on my cell phone earlier, and, sure. and uh, I'll give you my home number. Uh, cause I, I got I, my research book. I have a book of research. I got about six books of research. Okay. So I have to write down these things, you know, I'm, and I just want the straight facts just like you do. And, and since I met your series online, uh, one of the only individuals I know that gets the straight story from people and puts it out there, I read so much about those. I wasn't going to do it, but I said, you know some he just might think this is noteworthy since I've had more than one encounter, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I, I'm thankful that at least y'all are, uh, uh, what you call that? Into the into the dog man thing. You're you're researchable people. You're professional enough to put it online to help other people. Right. The stories I've read are horrendous. I've heard the howl at night. That's what really gets me. People don't realize that in Louisiana it's dusk all when it gets to be dusk and the sun down. That's when everything starts creeping. Wow. When it yeah. turns orange, all the snakes come out, and God knows what else. Skeeters, I've been out there by you at night. It'll make a grown man cry. I grant you. You got to be prepared. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, no, but as a research person, you're very appreciated online. Your program is probably number one. I've seen the other dog man related cases. Some of those are horrendous. And then, and I also read about the Vietnam vets who went to, what was it, Taylor, Louisiana, uh, Mississippi? Yeah, yeah. And they shot the son of a gun and those bullets didn't work. Yeah, but me a lot of second thoughts. You know, I, my cousin Thibodeau lives right over here. He's got a fifty caliber, but see, I'm not going to go out and try to destroy an animal. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. It, you, you know that that particular story, though. I don't know about that one because uh, uh, I do know people. I know personally someone who has shot the dog man, and it did hurt it. Um, I'm sure it did. You know, and, sure, and, I'm sure so, it did. Yeah. So so. Um, there's, there's a few stories out there that where the bullets ricocheted off and stuff like that. I just don't believe that. Um, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're physical, you know, creatures. You, you've seen one, you know, darn well, they have skin on the railroad um, track. Yeah. And they leave tracks and stuff so they can be shot. They're, they sure may they be tough and they, they might not go down when you first shoot them, but they're going to, they don't want to bleed out later either. So, um, no. My idea of killing and you know, uh, is is one thing. I mean, if it's going to be your survival, you know where that's at. You're going to save yourself. Um, I didn't expect to see a dog man werewolf standing on his back legs between railroad tracks on a foggy Louisiana morning. You know, right, and it's, right. I had my dog with me, right. or he didn't ever because he went off on it. He just said, "Hold up," he just yeah. froze right there. Something's yeah. coming through. Oh, we was on a bridge now. Well, well, hold on, hold on, though. Let's. Let's let's start from from like when you got up that day, and let's just take us take us through the to through the story, like what you went to go do that day, and then you know just kind of tell us the story that way. Um, okay. From from the very start. It is a Saturday. It's a, either a Saturday or a Friday morning. It's a couple of years back. I worked as a welder tacker, and I, my weekends are sacred because you're tired as heck, you know. You're, you know, you're just tired. So I said, we're going to go hunting, hunting. I want to see if we can get just, just to get out and go see, see what it is. 
And I always put Hunter on the best vitamins, B12, vitamin C, vitamin D. Plus, I programmed him real good. <laughs> so, so, German Shepherd's hunting in the bayou is a killing machine. That's why he attacked trains before this incident, just to prove his manhood, you know. So that's good enough, Hunter Bone. So here we go. We went we went west towards Texas about not not too far out of Crowley. It's some abandoned railroad tracks. It was foggy. It was early, 545. I bought me my 12-gauge Remington with buckshot and so a few more rounds some bird shot, whatever. I parked the truck, and we went down the railroad tracks. And here it is, 545 on a Louisiana morning, and you don't hear nothing. Maybe the highway over here a little bit. But hunters always eat just to get his honey in the bayou. He'd find snakes. Whatever it is, I'd just turn him loose. And he'd be wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, you know. So when we got to this certain part of the tracks, we're walking, I don't hear nothing but my feet crunching on the railroad tracks. He stops in the middle of the road tracks and stops. And I said, what is it, on a bone? Where's that? That's the Cajun. Where's that? Sir? He didn't say nothing. He just kind of glimmered. I said, okay. So we went on a few more feet, and he stopped again. And I was looking for something, maybe a raccoon or something, something like that. He's been hit before by a raccoon and skunk, so put his butt in the trunk and go back home if that happens. But what it is, the eyeballs, you know how the dog, Hunter had that scent. He's looking straight ahead, and I know it ain't good because he's doing the, the, the quiet tiger growl. I said, uh-huh. So here comes something down the track, and it, sure enough, this thing, I kid you not, I almost lost it. I almost did myself wrong, you know. This son of a gun was 10 foot tall a werewolf-looking creature coming out of the fog down the railroad tracks, and Hunter was terrified, too. That's the first time in six years that dog's ever been afraid. And this sucker is staring and got the ears, the whole shebang, the teeth. I said, what on God's name? It was just like a froze fright feeling. Yeah. You don't say nothing at that point. Believe me, my shotgun would have probably not stopped it, but... I looked at him, it looked at me and Hunter, and I was waiting for something, you know. Um, here I am, I got, I, I, I said, I did remember say, shoot him, the boy says, but I didn't. Hunter was about to attack this thing. That's why I give that dog credit, because he would die for me. And I, so I raised the shot, and over at that dog creature's head, and shot me some buckshot, and that sucker jumped up. I mean, twangered off his feet up. And let out some howly looking punky screams. I said, Man, oh Lord, help me. You know, I was going to waste him, but I didn't. I was going to even try. And he just kind of shivered and howled and ran back down the tracks into the fog. And I could hear him crashing through the trees to the side. I was going to pursue him, and Hunter was going to. But I said, No, Hunter, what if there's, my, my thoughts are, what if there's more of them? Yeah. What if there's a pack dog instinct here? You know, I said, no, forget that, Hunter. I mean, the fear factor is still there even after you let go of a round. Right. You know, you think you're tough with a 12-gauge and a buckshot. That's fine. But tell me something. Are you sure about it? You know, so right. I said, no, split. We hauled boogie fast back down the rails. I stopped about maybe 50 yards, turned back and shot two more rounds for insurance. Make sure that sucker ain't following me. But then you get the oogly boogly sensation <laughs> that you're going to be turned into <laughs> chomp time is coming. So we split. We ran back down them tracks. I mean, you when fear comes on you, you know it. I mm -hmm. mean, the shake, it shake your fear. 12 gauge or not, dog, it don't matter. It's just that, that there's a primordial instinct feeling when this creature comes up that that you don't like. Yeah. I don't know if he's going to hurt me or what, but I, the encounter lasted what? That's about a good 30-second encounter. I mean, I got a good look at his face, his ears, his teeth, his eyeballs. His paws was down to, like, long freaking. This sucker was built like Arnold Schwarzenegger, bro. I yeah. said, holy girl. Right. Okay, we got in the truck and we took off back to the town. You know, and 
when it happens to you, you're still in, you're still in that that mode where you're saying, "Is this for real?" <laughs> I yeah. think so, my friend. Especially when it happens to you, you know. Yeah. That's not the first encounter with a creature, but this I've never had any creature called a dog man. You know, right. Right. a werewolf. That's what scared me to death. I mean, I didn't tell my wife. I tried to tell my son, but he was too busy, so you know, people just shrug it off. I told the state patrol officer, he says, yeah, I I think I know what you're talking about, because they patrol around here at night on these ro- side roads. I, he said, I've seen stuff run across bridges and across roads. He said, I swear it's a wolf creature. I said, well, I just almost shot me one. He said, well, yeah. you might want to keep it to yourself. <laughs> you know how people are. But most of these Cajuns, they'll listen. And most of your viewing audience has had a, an experience or is going to have one. I would be cautious if I was you. Yeah. I mean, this sucker was big. I don't think a buckshot would have brought him down, but you know, some with all with all God's fear, and I'm sure I would have done some damage to his head, you know. But I I didn't shoot him, so I spared him from dying yeah. if that was the case. But I'm not going to forget. I still I could draw a picture of that any day of the week. Right, right. You you know, I had a sheriff um come on here recently, and actually, I had a judge come on here recently too. And he was he was a sheriff also for like fifteen years, and then he's been a judge for like thirty years. But um, the the sheriff he now he is uh, he's a federal police officer now, uh, and I can't really say because I I don't want to give away his identity there because um, you know some people are kind of funny about that, and uh, you you know when you got those jobs like that, it's 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 not the same as someone like me sharing, you know, or. You know, uh, because they want you to be able to get on to lead on to them because their their business is their business. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I get that. And and uh. But anyway, th- this one sheriff he he got a call um for an am- animal disturbance um and he went out there and he uh you know when he he got out there he seen that the people were just tore up that and that it was a trailer house you know. And yeah. uh, so he goes to his trunk and he gets his shotgun and they have a little chargeable flashlight back then. Um, and it's kind of like a plastic flashlight uh, that charges in the cruiser. So he gets the flashlight and he goes out with his shotgun and starts looking around. And um, and he was shining the flashlight at the edge of the woods and he spotted a dog man. And he said this thing acted like it didn't even care that he was looking at it and he said that was the most fear he had ever had in his whole life and he's sitting there with a Remington shotgun you know uh, loaded with double lock buck and slug every other uh, uh, you know alternating uh, uh, right. slug buck shot awesome. slug, you know uh, that yeah. that was the type of load that they put in the sheriff uh, um, type of uh, uh, setup that they had and and um and, you know so there's this fear thing that come along with these creatures and so when you're telling me you know that uh there's a a, a type of fear that comes off i you know it's it's interesting because i don't i don't know i guess when you see something that looks like a dog and it's standing up and it's that darn tall that's that, the one that got me that's the one that <laughs> Yeah. That, that, put, that, that puts it on you because you're saying, well, now, I got my dog, Hunter Ball, who's, you know, 95 pounds, and he could chew up the bayou. This sucker come, and that's our mama. You know, that's yeah. mama dog to come in to check two puppies on the rail. Yeah, yeah. One with thick and one that looks chewable. Yeah. So, 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 what did this thing? What did this thing look like? Can you kind of tell us? Uh, give us a description. Like, differently, a wolf head and a big body with claws standing on his back is black and kind of brownish. The eyes was yellow. I swear, I saw red in them eyeballs. Cause I, you know, when your eyeballs tack on something, it's done. Yeah. You know, and that thing, I'm looking what, 45 feet and closing, and it stopped when I showed him my gun. I don't think he liked that none. And it was ground the teeth that wide, boy. And I mean wide. That thing would take your arm off. 
big, big muscles, claws, and kind of grimacing, and kind of, when he stood, he didn't stop moving, he's kind of just looking me over, and looking Hunter over, and looking me over, then he looked me over real good, and the intent on the animal, I don't know what this confrontation was for, and just checking me out. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't tangle one of these suckers with a dang 38, if you want to know, or just regular bird shot. I don't think so. No, uh huh. He looked business. I mean, this is big. And I, my intention was I was going to have to get away from it. Right. That primal fear of wanting to run, even with a shotgun, but we're talking a critter. I'm six foot even. This sucker was taller than me by at least two more feet, and I mean humongous. And see, the, what troubles me is that far, it's not too far from Crowley, the railroad tracks. Where do these things live? Where do they stay? Where do they hunt to get so big? Cows? Yeah. They don't go to Walmart and go to a wolf mart somewhere. But you know, the question I've heard, I bet you asked before, why can't you get one of these creatures and tame them to be friendly? Well, what's the nature of this thing to survive? I mean, I've heard the reports before by, I was in the military, <clears throat> and I read some reports about some of these creatures and the blood they get from them has human blood, chlorophyll, which is plant, and animal blood. Now, you tell me what's up with that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you ain't going to tame nothing like that. No, it, it, there's nobody who habituates dog man. <laughs> I've heard of people yeah. that have hab habituation sites with Bigfoot, but never, I've never heard of a habituation with a dog man. Uh, that would be I, dumb. I was a dog man catcher here in this town and pit bulls and stuff and wild dogs. You know, they, I got bit before. I, got, I still got the marks all over my arm. And you had to get the rabies shot. This thing would just take your arm and your hand off and chew you like bubble gum. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't afraid enough to stand that close to us. But I, I'm glad that the shotgun was loud enough. I think that's what scared him. He might have been shot before. That I don't know. Yeah. I didn't yeah. hang around too long. I mean, I went back before with my dog during the daytime, but this is early in the morning, and he's covered by the brush and the fog. He made, he made tracks leaving. I'm glad he did. These suckers are big. I mean, you can... You could pick up probably the front end of a car, smash your door, or your window, grab you, and take off with you. It's disturbing to me that more people don't don't come up with their stories. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've heard of them being. I interviewed one guy who encountered one. He said was twelve foot tall, uh, and well, and it's hard to know exactly. You know because. It, it, someone is speculating on how tall it is, but he said he shined a flashlight across at uh -huh. eye level, nothing, because he heard it come up on him, and then he shined uh -huh. it up a little higher, and it was like nothing, and then he shined it up, just kind of accidentally kind of shined it up real high, way right. up, and he said, and he hit, he the light came across the face, and he said this thing had eyes the size of grapefruit, he said that the, the thing, uh, and he said the eyes on this one was kind of like toward the side of the head, like a cow, you know. Um, so it didn't have the front binocular type eye, so it seemed to be like the type 3 dog man. Um, and, and, uh, and it had its head tilted, and it was looking down at him from kind of like, like the side view of its head, you know. But it growled at him, and it, and it, uh, and it, uh, did something to him where it made him feel like he was on fire inside and you know the sound from the growl he said it, it paralyzed him and it felt like it was boiling his insides um and and who knows exactly what that's about but um so this, but this it, thing was taller than the tree low he looked up with his flashlight yeah oh. yeah he was sitting on his tackle box and 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 he had uh i think there was like six six people there they all took off, and he got hit with the sound. He said he the, it growled, and and the sound hit him, and he it paralyzed him, and he fell off of his tackle box, and he was laying on his back, and he thought he was going to die. And uh, his friends all took off, and um, and 
you know, and he was just waiting for, you know, for something to eat him, you know, <laughs> he didn't, he, so he thought he was going to die, and then, uh, um, you know, nothing happened, and he was able to get up, and he don't know really where the thing it went, or what exactly the thing did, but, um, but he said the snout on it, he said the snout was eight inches across, he said the head, he, the head was like two and a half feet wide, the eye was as big as a grapefruit, and the thing, the eyeballs were as big as grapefruits. Yeah, he, he he said when the thing came through the woods, he said it sounded like a bulldozer. It was mowing stuff down. He said it sounded like a bulldozer coming through the woods. And it was nighttime. They were fishing at Taylorsville Lake here in Kentucky. And, Kentucky, uh, okay. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we have land between the lake stories and stuff like that, LBL, um, uh, the beast of LBL and things like that. But, um, but anyway, that... He, he said it sounded like a bulldozer. He said it was breaking things and snap. I mean, he said it was like huge snapping and breaking. And see, right before that, there was something that was throwing things at him. And um, mm -hmm. and then the sound of the bulldozer was coming up on him. And he said when it the bulldozer sounded like it came all the way up right to the edge of where they were at. They were in a little clearing right beside the lake. And it came up right to uh, to the edge of the woods, right next to where they were had you know their little camp thing set up, and um, and so that's why he was shining the flashlight to see what it was, and he shined it. You know, normally you would shine the flashlight at eye level, and maybe a little higher, and then he kind of accidentally shines it up at you know about ten, twelve feet. He he said twelve feet. Um, and it and it was looking down at him, a black, solid black eye, as big as a grapefruit, had his head tilted, kind of looking down. Can you? I, I mean, I picture that, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that sounds." I have to go read that online. You know, something that's scary if it, something that big on a fishing trip in Kentucky. Now, yeah, I never been to Kentucky. I know a lot of people in the military for Kentucky, and they could outshoot anybody. You know. It's just the way they raise raised and something like that. Yeah. That raises questions of how, what are we dealing with here? Yeah. More than 10 feet, I believe it. Believe you, if there's Bigfoots, and I know I've seen tracks in the bayous, I couldn't explain this, that made Hunter Bone sniff the print. You know, they're a monkey, big feet. Yeah. I said, what is it? That ain't right. normal, Hunter. Yeah, like yeah. Kentucky. Yeah, so, like so, some of these creatures are huge, man. It's 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 uh, unbelievable that there can be things that big out there, but they're they are, and um, typically um, things that big, I think, are easier to hide because they're, they can stand hide. beside See, a I tree. I want like you did. If they're since I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you, but where did these some of guns hang out? Where they live in holes, they live in tree, in mounds. So on some of them, I've read two reports from last year. These men out here in these countryside live in the in the farmer's barns, right. and he's had to run some of them off. Right. Just yeah. stay in temper. They've had cows mutilated up north Louisiana. Had Bigfoot ran off with several pigs, but they have an overpopulation of sow pig, wild pigs in Arkansas. My kin folks up in. Arkansas, and them, all my kin folks from Arkansas, and they told me stories about that, which I never believed till <laughs> I'm 54 now. Now I believe them. Right. You know, they're off with, we're talking big pigs underneath the arm of a creature walking off with your pig. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you live in a desolate area, you're going to have to run into something. Yeah, well, you know, there. when you look on a map, of the uh, wildlife refuges and uh, national parks and things like that, you'll be surprised at how much land there is that there are na national parks. Uh, we have one national park in Kentucky that goes all the way through the state of Kentucky uh, from Indiana um, and like the Ohio area all the way through Kentucky down into Tennessee. So it's huge, and that's just one. 
Yeah, when you're it's talking about someplace like Utah, Utah has got huge amounts of land. And every state has these areas. You know, I've lived, uh, when I lived in Texas, I lived on the edge of, uh, of a uh, wildlife refuge. Uh, in, when I lived in Sadler, Texas, and I can't remember what the name of the refuge was, but um, there, there's all kinds of huge areas of woods. And I think that the government um, keeps these areas of woods as national parks and state parks and uh, wildlife refuges and things like that so that these things have places to be that are right. vast. Uh, a lot of people think, well, okay, there's not much land left. That's not true. When you look at the map and you start looking at these areas, there's a huge amounts of land that people do not live. They're, uh, they're, designated for wildlife and, and things like that. So these things live in those kind of areas. And then, you know, like in Louisiana, when you got all these big, huge swamp areas, I don't know how much of it's wildlife refuges or national parks and things like that. But right. um, Well, South Louisiana is a sportsman's paradise. Marsh Island, where you wanted to go, you can go. I mean, you can go there, but see, they got other dense parts of Louisiana. Most of it, you have to if you, you have to watch where you go because it's designated as a non-hunting zone, you know, because they got so many hunters that come here wanting to shoot the holes and everything and go back and say we shot this one and this one and all these ducks and all this. I mean, but the designated wildlife, man, this is a bayou to the max. They got three hundred million alligators. You don't find them all, but they're there. Snakes. I've seen snakes. Not to change the subject, laying on the road black like a giant piece of plastic PVC pipe. We're talking 12 foot long snakes and Hunter would just go right up to them in their face. I said, no, Hunter, I'd have to get him by the tail and throw his honey away from there. Right. That's just one snake. Yeah. You know, oh, listen, a lot. there was one time I was down in Texas. I was, uh, I went down, um, I, I, I used to go behind the little the, the place I lived on a little ranch down there on the edge of this wildlife refuge in Sadler, Texas. Um, I used to walk down the creek all the time and go fishing. And uh, hey, spe especially when it would rain, you know, I wanted to go down there and fish while the water was running because you could catch catfish good when the water was flowing good. Um, right. but, but one day that I talked a friend of mine into bringing his canoe and we were, we would canoe up the creek and fish you know and uh there we, we canoed up this creek and i'm not kidding you I, we ran across this snake mm -hmm. that looked to me like a water moccasin um but this thing i'm not kidding you we were i was like are you sure that's not like a cow snake or something you know something well, i was trying to figure out what kind of dang snake it was but it looked everything. I knew my snakes. You know, I live down in Texas. You know your snakes. Uh, sure. This thing, we our canoe was ten foot long. Okay, and I killed this snake with a huge uh, wooden oar that we were paddling with. I, I was like, row me up there, and I hit him right across the back of the head, and uh, and killed it. And so we, we, we canoed back to the campground, uh, <laughs> there was a campground on, on up and we were dragging this snake and it, I'm not kidding you. Um, he was sitting in the front of the canoe. He was holding this thing around the neck and the neck, he could only get his hand halfway around the neck. So this thing was probably four and a half to five inches across in diameter like if you were to go straight through the body you know and it was as long or longer than our canoe because he was holding in, it in the front of the canoe and it was it was behind the tail was behind the canoe and that i'm i'm thinking golly if something like this is out here and people don't know about it something that right. huge because you wouldn't even think there would be a snake like that um, water moccasin co uh, um, co uh, cotton mouth you know whatever you want to call it um, right. that would be that big 
But I'm telling you what, we killed it and we were take we took it back to the campground because we wanted to ask other people, do you uh, see the snake? What kind is this? And they all thought it was a water moccasin that was uh, over ten foot long. And, ten and, uh, foot. Yeah, ten foot. Unbelievable. Yeah. Story and uh, the what, is it, what do you call those police officers that retrieve bodies for the coroner's office? Yeah, right over here at the Chafalaya Basin. I used to cross that bridge. I used to drive an armored car full of money for Louisiana. Right down going to New Orleans, this guy had to retrieve a body out of the Chafalaya, and he popped back up. Said, "I ain't going after it no more. Forget you, y'all crazy." He said that sucker was at least. At least seven inches around, or probably ten inches around. He says forty foot long snake. Now, this is a police officer. He said that's a prehistoric snake that lives on the bottom of the chair. I don't want no more of this job. I mean, a police officer. Yeah, right. Sure, but I believe you if you say big. Believe me, in Texas, the saying, you know, everything big in Texas. Well, man, <laughs> exactly. My, <laughs> help me. You know, I'm. I'm. I'm 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 one of many people you talk to that that has had for real encounters that's lived, you know. And I don't know what you've been through doing all this research, but you're welcome to come to Louisiana anytime, my friend. There's all good people here. The food's good, and the bayou is dark at night. Believe me, they have the Zika <laughs> virus going on, but it probably wouldn't hurt me none. <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. Snakes wouldn't hurt you, you know, and. It's the bayou is always the same. Look, this here is June, and everything's the rain monsoon season. And it's interesting to know, too, if you realize you, you were talking about before the creatures in the wild, but uh, the people that come up missing. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I know for sure that some of those have been taken by those creatures. I ain't stupid. Children in national, excuse me, parks and yeah. stuff like that. What, what's your what's your indication of uh, of the trivial dog man? Well, I, I, th I well I think that um, a lot of the uh, missing person cases uh, um, have to do with uh, the Bigfoot stuff and the dog man mostly. I think the dog man mostly is doing that. Um, but I, I do I do know of a few cases. I have one story. Uh, um, on this channel uh, here that uh, someone witnessed two Sasquatch take a, a woman, but I think she was feeding them and stopped feeding them. Um, uh -huh. and, to get away, I, I figured that. And you know something? You, uh, you've you heard reports about the lizard people, I'm sure, huh? Yeah, yeah, right. Your storyline, after my encounters for 20 years, I finally got online and, and I look at your dead gum web page and you got so many encounter stories and episodes, you can make the worst movie ever challenged. <laughs> You're right, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Movie, I got Even people, my own movie. stories. <laughs> you know, I've got my own sure. stories, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Uh, believe me, on, I know yep. stuff exists that people say don't exist, but I don't care if they say it exists or not because I know it does for a fact. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you do too, so. Um. Sure. I, had, I was, I don't know if it was a big fur or a dog, man, but my dog Hunter and I, we were being tracked by something, and there's, there's just no way. I mean, it's too loud. The cricks. I said, Hunter, whatever is hunting us is not a man. Because look where we are. We're way the hell out here, and I don't see no man. I had my scope. Something was moving in there, and I know it was looking at us. Yeah. He didn't like it, none. We had to go all the way around through Snake Bit, back to the bridge, to get home because this thing was following us. Yeah. I mean, we could just turn and find out what it is, but we didn't. Do, do you think it was kind of like pushing you out of the woods, trying to make noise to force you in a certain direction? I think so, because I, if there's one, you know there's got to be two. Now, tell me, do these things are born? These things are born, correct? Yes, These correct. things born okay so they got children now you know how you feel when you got a puppy dog in your arms in your hands you love puppy dog right yeah. right and hunter thought i was his mama because he's my puppy dog spoil rotten do anything for mama wouldn't you you kill for me uh-huh okay come on so them things has children yeah. and you know they do right yeah they do so that instinct to defend your young has got to be strong and where they can bring back to mama for feeding time well they hop it so yeah yeah Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stories where they um, uh, 
uh, two or three of them will work together and they'll they'll make noise and things like that and, and uh, push a person out a certain direction put just push them out of the woods they don't because there's some times uh, these things don't want to com confront you they just want you to get out of the area they're at but the dog Believe man it. is a whole different deal I, I think the dog man is uh, they kind of don't want any trouble but if you want some, they'll give it to you. You can believe that. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, know that, that encounter, like you said, most of your people I, I listen to in your storylines, those people, are, I can tell when somebody's lying to me. Yeah, yeah. I know instinctively when you're lying to me. And I don't hear no lies in none of them stories. I don't hear no great puffed up magical stuff because this stuff here is in your face, bro. Yeah. Yeah. For real. This would make the worst horror movie ever made. And plus, then you have to take on that you're by yourself and this thing's out there with you. It ain't your cousin. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, <laughs> I know when to run like you probably do. Some people are stubborn. Yeah. Look, believe me, I've been, I've been camping before and, uh, and had a Sasquatch encounter, dude. And, uh, and, believe it. and, and believe me, I didn't, I didn't really want to, um, I didn't want to camp there no more. You know, I, 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 figured <laughs> I don't it was think just, you do either. <laughs> you know, it's like, I ain't going to sleep in that laugh, tent. You you'll probably that. do is laugh. You, you, you know what I mean? It's like, I can go over here to this other little island and camp. Um, because where I was camping, there was all kinds of little islands and stuff that were around the same area. It was a big, yes, na it's a big national park, uh, uh that, straddles kentucky and tennessee i wasn't on an island when i had this encounter but um the thing basically the thing was just trying to run me off he was throwing things at me and he was snapping huge limbs i mean it sounded like trees falling over uh but like when you got like one tree fall over you could say okay maybe that maybe that's a tree that just fell over but 10 trees don't fall over you know what I mean? So, and, and then it Three. kept throwing things at me when I was, uh, um, fishing and, and, uh, and then, then it was, uh, basically uh, coming up on my tent and stuff. And, and I was like, uh, heck with this, you know, I started getting really kind of uh, scared about it. Um, because you don't know for sure what one of those things to do, man, they can do whatever the heck they want to do and you ain't going to do nothing about it. And so I, you believe, sir? And you're you're investigating since you're an investigative reporter and have a syndicated for you to help people. You're gonna you're gonna uh, check out the fact and confirm the fact that these things are loose critters in the United States and they've been here for a while. I'm sure. Yeah. All right. They've been here for more than a hundred years. I'm sure. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know. The that they, they've been around. The Indians talked about them all the time, and Native Americans. Uh, I, it, it, it's it's basically it's not I, i've interviewed native americans they know oh yeah um, baby i'm telling you that's what was strange my, my uncle jim is a, a korea and nom vet and he's got stories about it. he went to arizona but it was about the lizard people it wasn't about sasquatch yeah yeah arizona is a very interesting place very interesting and, and they're they're uh basically uh uh the Arizona area, um, when you get over around Superstition Mountain and things like that, um, mm -hmm. uh, there are some fascinating stories, even uh, subterranean types of. Now, now, the lizard people thing, I believe, is absolutely real. Um, and I think they come from out under underground. I think they come up out of the ground. Oh, you're uh, right about that, because it, because it's too. You know, when a when a Girl Scout tells a tale that's true, and it stays true, it's all true. And same difference with a Boy Scout. And then you were saying about the lizards. The last report I read was dated um, last year, 2015. A military gentleman, unidentified, he says there's millions of lizards that live underground. Millions. He right. said they're overpopulated. He said they would gobble you up for breakfast and all these backpackers that go in the desert their reports of being taken in caves and raped yeah. and beaten and yeah. stuff like girls 
in Eaton, and those miners, that was last year, those miners said they were trying to open a mine, and they looked down from the rocky grove and saw a woman on her back with five or six of these lizard people gobbling her. So they opened fire on them. So yeah. that's just one instance. Uh, for, you know, I think I'd open fire, too. They killed a few of them off. But the right. dog, man, I'm going to school like you. You have a little more time on the subject. I'm going to have to do a lot of research. Like you said, you have to get the facts and the figures. If you want the people to believe, and believe me, you're welcome to come to Louisiana. We could do research. I have five notebooks full of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, I promise you, this, this, year, this year I'm coming to Louisiana, and I want to go to – and. and the only other person I'm thinking about bringing on board would be um, uh, a friend of mine who had a dogman encounter that lives in Texas, and mm -hmm. he's got all kinds of guns like you do, because I can guarantee you one thing. I will not go to Louisiana and hunt any dogman or Bigfoot without being armed. That's foolish in that area. I believe and that. too. <laughs> cameras you know, too. I'll have cameras and armed with people that know how to use arms. Um, thank you. And, and but I know a place where the, it's an island, and it's not Marsh Island. Um, it's a different island. Uh, Grand so, Isle. Uh, well, Grand Isle I, I can't disclose that because this person doesn't want it disclosed. But, That's fine. But Keep I know up. I know where we would stay. Um, and uh, and and these things are on the island. I don't mm -hmm. want to like make the uh, the creatures nervous or anything. I I just want to <laughs> I want to be nervous. Able, the first yeah, day yeah. the first day would be going around the island filming, look, and then we would analyze the film and see if we see anything peeking and things like that. And then we would go uh, to the the areas that this person who reported this, uh, Diana. Um, and she got some footage. We would go to the areas that she went and see if we could get anything. And then we mm -hmm. would kind of creep in. I don't want to go to the area they sleep. You know what I'm saying? They're on an island, so they're sleeping somewhere. I don't want to make them have to kill us because I don't care if you got guns or not. If, if right. you got a population in them on an island, if you go too close, them things, I don't care how many guns you got, they could kill you and you wouldn't even know that you, you know what I'm saying they can run by and take the guy last in line out bam and all of a sudden he'd be gone where'd he go you know you know that kind of stuff it's crazy the Ambush. you know I don't want to tempt them I, I, but we, we could we could do it in a way that they would we might get roared at you know that kind of stuff stuff thrown at us and it's time to back off you know that kind of thing so that's kind of my plan. Now, um, anyway, uh, I guess this uh, it has, has been a fascinating <laughs> story for sure. So, and, and another thing I would really like to do is talk about um, um, the uh, story that you were talking about first with the werewolves uh, uh, coming up on, on that property. So, we may have to talk more about that later and, and bring Even that story out. I don't mean Interrupt you. You could uh, you can Google that on Google Earth if y'all want to, and look at Crowley, Louisiana, and you can look down the railroad tracks, in Crowley, Louisiana, and it's right down the railroad tracks called the Ziegler Nursery. And that I read that in a book called Ghosts on the Bayou. When I had read that, I called those people and they said, "Uh huh, it's true." And she she said, "My children are still kind of dumbfounded to this day because it just came on the property." And it pooped on their porch and some kind of two of them now and the wildlife, sure. So you can Google that. Crowley, Louisiana, and look down the railroad tracks. It'll be on the left hand. It's called the Ziegler Nursery. It's a little white house. And now a veterinarian lives in there. He's not as scared of animals because he has to either nurse them back to health or put them down, you know, with a syringe. Yeah. Yeah. And, but sure. Yeah, well, that I mean, might be a very interesting story to look into and go film the location or something like that. Um, he'll let you go on his property, too. Yeah, well... He that. wanted me to get somebody like you one day, if it ever occurred, to do a story for him. I, uh, I've i been writing some things, but see, I wanted to... If you want to stretch the truth on some things, it might make it look good, but until you figure it out, then I, it's a whole other deal. 
Yeah. Oh, well, this stuff you don't need to stretch the truth on. Uh, it, yeah. it, it is it is crazy it, enough it, just the way it is, you know. Yep. <laughs> For sure. Well, well Mike, is, Mike. Uh, Mike, I really appreciate you sharing uh, your, sure. your story today. I think today. you're one of the most interesting people I've met in my life. Well, you, at least you have enough guts to put it out there for them. Yeah, well, thank you very much, man. And, uh, and, uh, and sa save my uh, cell number that I called you on earlier. And you yeah. have my email for sure because you have emailed me. And uh, and I'll be talking to you some. I've got your number. And um, okay. I, I'm, I am trying to plan a trip. Um, I, I may do one trip up here in Kentucky first with Kurt Stokes and kind of, you know, uh, do do a few things around here, uh, you know, here s real soon, and then uh, I want to come down there. Uh, sure, well, you know, come to Louisiana. The people here are so nice, yeah. and they have a whole library over here that I researched for twenty years. And you see what happens when you start picking up them little rocks and turning over them evidence pieces of evidence and start asking questions and go look and see. You are gonna find something. <laughs> yeah, you got uh, you're so, right. Just like. You got any snakes on you, Mama? Not now, Hunter Bone. Werewolves? Yeah, a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got, you got to know where the rocks are to turn over to, you know. And there, there, yeah. there are, there's a lot of rocks down there to turn over. That's for sure. And the thing is, you know, I investigated a lot of these things like you did, and talked to these people that live there, and they're good Catholic Christian old people, and they wouldn't lie. And the stuff they said curled my toenails listening. Right. You know. Yeah. And they saw this thing running from tree to tree when they come back home after a restaurant. You know, werewolves now. Right. I, they never describe what kind of werewolves. Probably the dog men. And that's oh, not yeah. very far from here. That's only four and a half miles down the railroad tracks, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, werewolf and dog man, I think, it, you know, pretty much the same thing. Um, that's why it's we <laughs> loop guru. That's what yeah. she called it. It's a loop guru. Yeah, the loop guru. Right. Luger, werewolf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fascinating stuff. Well, thank you, Mike, for coming on and, and and telling the story. I really appreciate it. Anytime, my brother. I look forward to meeting you. I have your email and your phone number on my research paper. Thanks for talking to you. And uh, I'm going to keep up my hunting. I hadn't hunted in a while. I haven't been down that way in a long time. But look here, I appreciate you calling me, good sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And all you out there on YouTube land, I really appreciate you all listening today. Um, we're going to have a lot more awesome things like this coming up here soon. Um, and I do plan on getting down there to Louisiana and covering some of these type stories. There's several people that you know have been on the show that live down this area like Mike here. And uh, it would be a fascinating trip. I would just really, really look forward to going down there. And uh, so God bless if anyone out there has a, a, a story of Bigfoot, Dogman, any kind of cryptid or supernatural uh, type story that you want to share that you think would fit this show. Well, you can contact me at Bruntonson at gmail.com. God bless and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.